if you ever wanted to start a business, it's uh, you'll find that it's pretty hard. I did this uh, about 10 years ago, this berry smoothies and fruities. I knew it was a good idea. I had some help from my brother and, and a friend of mine. And we, we were coming up with a really good flavor of a smoothie and I, I took off with it. Uh, but I didn't know what to do as far as a place to go and start selling. That's the other challenge is to try to figure out how you can sell something without all these expenses coming at you. And I think that's probably the biggest uh, thing for business, businesses to fail is that uh, they, they have too much expenses. They have, they, they, they either try to get too much too soon and they don't start out small with a, a small thing to, to keep going and let it grow organically or else it's going to have all sorts of uh, vulnerability to fail. Uh, even I remember a company in Utah, it was called Love Sack, big bean bag type things. Uh, they grew too fast though. Um, they, they started making them so fast that they had to get into business loans and credit and so to build more of them. So as they were building more of them on credit, other people had to buy those on credit and people weren't uh, giving their payments on those credit fast enough. So that company Lovesack actually failed even though it was really popular. I can't really give you an opinion on what everybody should do. It's everybody has a different situation and they have to be creative on what you can do with your resources and your with your with the things around you. Uh, my friend in Springville, he he does his business in his own way or he bought a house that looks really old. It looks like a 18 something house well I think it is built back then 1890 something I think and he with his unique circumstance he loves old timey historical things and also Harry Potter stuff and he was able to use that to his advantage and make his house look like it's some fantastical place that he could put a little store in there he was able to go to an event this last just a few weeks ago and he was able to extend it out to that and then people are interested if they're interested they still has his house that they can go to buy things if they want and it's constantly open and then he has other other ventures that he's getting creative that he's going into so he's using his house as an advantage My friend also had some free advertising from some news channels that came over and they were so intrigued with what he was doing with his house that they they did a store in his house. I think a handful of local news channels uh, came over to his house and did that. So it gave him some free pu publicity, but it, it made it so unique that, that they couldn't resist like showing that on the news. And that brought in some uh, some new customers and new exposure just for free. My brother also is starting a business. He is doing a children's TV app. It's called Buttle Sods TV. Uh, just little episodes of you know real life things that get kids engaged in real life type of things. And so they're interested in things that they can actually go outside and do. So they don't have meltdowns when they have screen time and that was a unique thing. They struggled a lot with making that work. The local news finally found out about them. They they did a report on them. And so then they were able to uh, get some free advertising that way. They got some more subscribers with that. Um, <clears throat> and then some other articles in the, some other news and stuff on the internet. Honestly, that doesn't like suddenly you're taking off and you're successful, but it helps. So there's a lot of learning curves with this stuff and a lot of businesses fail 
uh, for a lot of different reasons, advertising money, mismanagement, or it's not refined enough, or uh, it's not the lo right location, it's not a good enough product yet, or something. One of the challenges I had with this smoothie business is I didn't have any money to get a loan for a bank to give me any uh, any kind of money to get a franchise or start to put it into a store, rent a building and, and fix it all up and make it work. Because nobody knew about this. Nobody, it's a new, it's a new concept, a new, I mean a new uh, business name. It's not recognized and everything. So I didn't have any of that. I was just starting from scratch. And so what I thought of was a concession stand and that's what a lot of people start out with when they want to start a restaurant or something and they actually start with a food truck or a concession stand or somewhere in an event uh, what I found was those trailers were expensive as well so my parents had an old camper trailer they got for a hundred bucks and I asked them if I could converted into a concession stand and they they allowed me to do that so it took me uh, probably under a thousand dollars probably to get that fixed up I just used reused materials and just I uh, bought the essentials of uh, a few sinks and some countertop stuff to make it look nice and then a freezer and a blender so I had just the basics to make it up to code for you know the the food truck being a food truck vendor and so I, I got that licensed and I was up and ready but then the next challenge was to find a place to park it and to have customers see it on a constant basis this is another big learning curve uh, because I guess that's where you get into advertising and marketing and all that stuff which can also get expensive. I had uh, a couple places I had in mind that I can go that were popular to, for people to go to, but I, I learned that you gotta learn people's mentality. You gotta, gotta learn that what they're really looking for in a product and where you're gonna go uh, to be able to sell it. First, I went to a park. I got the city's permission to go to a, a park where a lot of people go every day especially during the weekend and I really wanted to go there and park there I was excited that they were gonna let me and so I did and but I learned that not a lot of people came up and bought a smoothie um, my the smoothie I was starting out with had sugar in it and when people go to that place to for recreation they're not looking for sugar to, to eat they're looking to exercise and to you know to be healthy like that so uh, it's not like a, a state fair where nobody cares during that time or a amusement park where they'll just eat any fried thing or any sugary thing. This is, uh, that, so you have to keep that in mind as well. I thought a farmer's market, I could go there and then I went and checked out a farmer's market and I saw a, a burger plate, a burger truck and uh, and he wasn't doing all that well because that was only a certain time in the morning on Saturday. Nobody's really looking for a burger during the morning hours on a Saturday. So uh, it was just the timing that was wrong with, the, with that burger place. If you had a breakfast thing, maybe that would have worked, but um, it's still for a limited time. And then there's the challenge of <clears throat> You know, if you find a parking lot and somebody lets you rent a spot, and I wanted to rent a spot in a mall, and they're totally excited to have me there because there was a snow shack thing that was there before. And what happened was they were going to charge me a thousand dollars a month, and I was just starting out and I didn't have any customer base at all, so I wasn't going to even make half that, if any. Uh, even close to that so there wasn't any uh, really incentive for me to do that for a completely start from scratch business and so from there I had to find 
a place where they were, weren't going to charge me a rental fee. So I, I found this. It was an event just during a couple months in the summer uh, where it's a, a free event and they just had, it was the city sponsored thing uh, for their orchestra to play concert one night a week for a couple months. And I did that and that was the most successful event that I've ever had. <clears throat> and I had uh, for two hours during that event, I had a full line of people and I still, you know, only bro broke even that night, but it was, I, f I called it a success just because, you know, there was a constant line of people. I got uh, really good food feedback from people and I had way, I only had two flavors. I had strawberry and strawberry banana. And it was just me that was doing the whole food truck thing. Uh, and so it was a one man band and I, I was able to do that whole thing uh, with, you know, providing them with a smoothie with under a minute. So uh, I have further plans with that, with so many other awesome flavors and ways of making the flavor that's unique. And uh, I'm gonna make a, a Brazilian limeade that's unique uh, and it's made in a unique way. But it's just really, really good for summertime type things. So <clears throat> I decided that this year is probably gonna be the best time to do this because I now that I've paid off my house, I'm not risking a whole lot when I'm when I'm venturing out into doing a business and taking my time to do this because I'll be at home and I don't have to pay rent or a mortgage and that helps tremendously. So that's the way I've been able to do it within my circumstance. Other people have started a food truck in other ways. Uh, either they have somebody, their spouse has an income or, you know, they already have a chunk of money to start with. Uh, and they already have a place to live where their house is paid off or whatever. But the thing that killed me the first time was I ran out of money the first summer and then I, I still had to pay rent and I still had to try to figure out what to do financially. I didn't have enough events to go to and stuff like that. Uh, in general, a, a food vendor or any business is gonna take at least two or three years to catch on and so it's initially you, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time and money and resources just getting known and you've got to play you have to have a place that you're gonna be have a way of communicating with your customers so I've tried to solve all those problems doing it this time and so the problems that I've solved were I'm already next to this historical train station so and I observed people when they stand in front of that station there, they're just sitting there waiting for the train and staring over at whatever I'm doing at the house. And there's a bunch of kids and adults of all ages, uh, families, grandparents. And so they, I figured, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put a sign out on my trailer here I'll just put a sign right there. It'll be my free advertising. And, you know, even as the train is loading up, people are sitting there looking around and they're just staring at uh, whatever's going on around them. And I notice every time I come outside, they're watching whatever I'm doing. So I'm like, well, I might as well be advertising. Uh, you get some free advertisement. And so basically I already have the sign. The other thing was I've, even though I'm advertising, I got a way for the, I have to have a way for them to communicate and get updates on where I am. So I just made this cheap sign. It was 14 bucks and I got it printed out. Just said coming soon. And then my Twitter account for the berry smoothies. And I'll just put that right under the sign and this will allow me to communicate with people even if I don't have a way of emailing them or whatever. 
but it's just for people who are interested. Uh, but I don't have to pay for anything because it's right in front of my house. And the other challenge was a place to go and park my trailer uh, for services. And I felt like, well, my front yard is perfect for that anyways. So within my, I want to take advantage of that circumstance and just be, um, and, and try this smoothie thing again. And I, and I feel like I could do it this time without risking a whole lot and uh, becoming homeless again. So the other things you have to get over in a lot of ways are, are fears. Fears of failure, whole list of them. Only you know what your fears are. I, I hate when fears get in the way and it, it really bothers me. So I let that bother me until it bothers me so much that, that it overwhelms the fears and I just go and do it. You're never, you never feel ready to do anything. Uh, you never feel like, oh, I feel like everything's in line and I feel like I can go forward with it. I, I never felt like I've ever been ready. You know, the either I don't know enough or I don't know uh, the, the product doesn't seem like it's good enough or i not experienced enough or I don't have enough money or I don't have something. I never feel like I'm ready enough and I and it's always going to be a feeling of well I'm just stepping out of the dark and I feel very vulnerable and I feel like you know I I am ill prepared and people are going to just not be satisfied with what I'm doing you know people are going to make fun of me people are going to real real ridicule me or put me down or whatever and you know it's just all these things that I'm thinking about that I'm just like you know what I it really bothers me that I'm having these fears I'm just going to go ahead and go forward with it but uh, all these factors come into play uh, but if you are passionate enough about what you're what you're going to do you, you believe in it uh, even if it's something that other people are doing if you're passionate about it, it it'll it'll come out in the product that you're doing even if it's a snow cone shack that everybody does all around the world if you're passionate about doing that you can make something unique that people love throw in a little twist of something and then and then people go to that shack and it can't be found anywhere else so uh, my friend is doing a paleo uh, recipe book and that's a popular thing doing paleo thing and there's restaurants that offer that but he's so passionate about doing it and making it taste good that that passion will come out in it and make it unique and really good so it'll make it stand out so that's really important I feel like is that whatever you're doing just be passionate about it and love it and you'll and people will feel that from you so here comes the train it's really loud but uh, I'm just gonna record it as it comes in so you can see the the reactions and stuff just from little sign up here that I put up I already have a guy back there taking pictures of it and I didn't expect that but I looked up and he was taking pictures already and I only had this up for like maybe five minutes We'll see what it does. There we go, free advertising. Couldn't ask for better location. The people getting on the train and off the train, that's pretty remarkable. So I guess that stands out pretty good. Not too bad. Makes it all exciting. So I just tell you the feelings that you have when you put up something that you make. There's a lot of vulnerability feelings and there's a lot of fears that run through your head when people are looking at it and they're wondering what it is. And uh, you just worry about how it's going to turn out, how they're going to like it, how it's going to go. But. Uh, those are the things you have to kind of do. You just kind of have to stick, stick your neck out, try it. And if you're passionate about it enough, you should be okay. That's what I think. But uh, <clears throat> I've done this before, so honestly this is not as hard this time. This time it's 
I have other fears that are uh, stronger. Fears maybe of uh, not being able to have enough money to get going with the first initial smoothie push and getting the licensing and stuff. So, but um, I actually having go through going through the the smoothie thing already and having people taste it. I already know it works, and I already know people like it, so I don't have those fears anymore. Um, my name is on that sign, so that's a little, that wasn't my choice, it wasn't my idea to put, to, to name the berry smoothies thing, but I think it was my brothers or my friends or something, he was, they were just saying, no, it's perfect, and I'm like, yeah, I know it's perfect, but it's my name, you know, I don't want it, my name being on there, but it's, uh, <clears throat> So if the business fails, then people are going to think of my name as a failure. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, it just ma it makes me vulnerable because I don't know what's going to happen with it. But um, I also know that if I don't do it, then I'll never do it. So I'll just have to step out into the dark, see what happens.